Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you and uh, broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and also live in Washington, D.C. Congressman Charlie Rangel, uh, U.S. Congressman from the 13th District and Rangel, R-A-N-G-E-L dot house dot gov. In my opinion, one of the most thoughtful, insightful, knowledgeable, and distinguished members of the United States House of Representatives. Um, uh, Congressman Charles Rangel, I should say. Uh, Congressman Rangel, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tom. My only wish is that my wife could have heard everything that you've said. <laughs> well, we'll, <laughs> we'll send you a tape. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, you were apparently in the Capitol building. If I, if, before we get to the politics of the day, because I did want to talk with you about the government shutdown. You have lived through, you were in the House of Representatives back during the Clinton era when, when New Gingrich tried to pull this stunt. Um, and I want to get to that, but just first of all, what what's the latest that you're hearing about this uh, person? Uh, CBS is reporting it was apparently a woman who was driving this SUV. Well, let me tell you, you, you'll know just as much as I from the outside, but from the inside, there was a new congressman that was challenging the chair. The chair was screaming that he was out of order, and he was continuing to speak, and it was very unusual because the young the young fella either didn't know the house rules or didn't care about the house rules, and the chair was out. And then at the same time this was going on, I was talking with Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, and Congressman uh, 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 Lou John Lewis swing open the Capitol doors, and they're running in. I thought maybe the sergeant at arms was going to chastise, which I never heard of, the member that was speaking, even though he wasn't recognized, which I never heard of that either. Mm. Instead, they sat down with a lady and told me that there was shooting outside of the Capitol and wow. that they were locking it down. Well, I saw them come through the door, and as I went to, to open the door, it was locked, and so... We all were locked into the Capitol. We put on the television. There was no information. We, there were no Capitol Police. They, they're not allowed on the Capitol floor of the uh, Congress. And so we did have a television in what we call the cloakroom, one in the Democratic, one in the Republican. And it was there that we found out uh, that uh, there was somebody that had shot up uh, something around here. And uh, and then, uh, ultimately, they let us out of the Capitol to tell us to take the tunnel to get to our offices that were locked down. I had to knock on the door and identify myself to get into my office. Since that time, the lockdown has been lifted, uh, the police, uh, I guess, very confident that there was not a a second uh, shooter. Uh, the doors are unlocked, and I'm here talking with a constituent. Hmm. Remarkable story. Uh, by the way, was the the member who refused to stop talking uh, a, a a tea partier? No, he was. Uh, he could. He was saying that as a new member, he could not understand how one person could risk uh, the, the, the capital being closed, how one person uh, could be responsible for not raising the debt ceiling and causing a fiscal calamity. Oh, so he was objecting to John Boehner, basically. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and I have all day been saying that with all of the power that our corporate structure has accumulated individually, the trillions of dollars that are out there that they have been able to prosper uh, during the recession and while so many people are unemployed. And then on the other side, the religious leaders the, uh, who don't listen to the Pope, but they, they, they say that, you know, that Jesus would want them to have food for the hungry and water for the thirsty, clothes for the naked, and and health care for the sick. And everything that we're trying to do is spiritual as well as political and legislative. 
And I don't recall the church getting together and telling the Congress, stop this nonsense. I don't recall the private sector, the, 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 the Mongols, the, the billionaires saying, I got my money through the American system. For God's sake, don't kill this goose. Don't let the American economy go down the drain. Yeah. And there's only one thing that could stop this, and that is, John Boehner wakes up one morning, and he says that he has given as much as he can to 50 or 40 or 50 members of his party. And they have wrecked the party, they have wrecked the leadership, they have wrecked the Congress in terms of working together, but I'd be damned if he's got to let them wreck the country. Mm. And he would be, maybe not the speaker that long, but he certainly would be a national hero that would have looked like the savior of our economy, uh, of our country. And it only takes him just to release and have a vote. That's yeah. all. Give us a vote. In, in other words, there is a clean continuing resolution to keep the government running bill that the Senate passed and sent back to the House on John Boehner's desk, and if he simply put this to a vote in the House of Representatives, it would almost certainly pass, and he's refusing to allow the members of the House, both his Republicans and you in the Democratic caucus, he's refusing to allow you members of the House of Representatives, we're talking to Congressman Charles Rangel of New York, he's refusing to allow you to vote on this continuing resolution, and thus he, uh, a one single member of the House of Representatives, is single-handedly keeping the government closed. Is that an accurate statement? That is accurate, and what makes it more painful to our Democrats is that the amount of money, the $96 billion, is far below what every Democrat thinks is necessary to spur the economy and provide incentives for infrastructure and for jobs and, for, for the, and to help the poor. We think that number is low. But we know we can't fight about it if the government is closed. And so we're saying what the president is telling to the Republican, keep the government open and then continue to show the differences of opinion we have with the budget and with other issues. And he's willing, the president is willing to debate the issues, but he's not willing to allow them to attempt to shut out the affordable care if the president wanted to do it, he couldn't do it. And they know this. John Boehner is an intelligent, professional politician, and he knows that the president has, cannot just repeal laws. Remarkable. By the way, just as an update, here's the, this is the latest via uh, Channel 7, ABC, the ABC TV affiliate here in Washington, D.C., and they're reporting, and I'll just read their report uh, from WJLA. Authorities shot and killed a woman Thursday afternoon outside the U.S. Capitol after she attempted to drive her vehicle through a barricade, police tell ABC7. The incident reportedly began when an unidentified woman tried to drive through a barricade at the White House. She had a child in the backseat of her vehicle. The woman fled the area and ended up at the Capitol, where she reportedly tried to drive through another barricade. Authorities opened fire on the vehicle, killing the woman, authorities say. And uh, they report a child in the vehicle is, is unharmed. So uh, this Something is... Something doesn't make sense. Too many people heard gunshots on the hill yeah. in front of the Senate. So Yeah. Well, apparently the police were, deal were, with it, but. were shooting at her car pretty aggressively. So, But we'll, we'll see how this story plays out. Well, everyone's safe, and, uh, I, I think, and uh, the yeah. Capitol Police... Uh, they, 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 we don't thank them enough every day. Well, and in fact, protect. Congressman Rangel, uh, Victoria Jones with the Talk Radio News Service was on our program earlier, and she said that uh, her understanding is that the pay for the Capitol Police will stop in about a week if the government continues to be shut down. Oh, my God. I, I, I can't believe. No, I, I, I don't think that's true. And now, with things being so bad, almost any rumor now looks like... Uh, it could make some sense, but the so you can bet your life, Tom, that the security of members of Congress would not be lessened by this. No pain is being felt by the people that are shutting down the government at all. 
As a matter of fact, no inconveniences. The people that are holding John Bania uh, uh, hostage, when they refuse to accept the clean, continued resolution, resolution was, was shouting and laughing with glee. Mm. There are some people in this country that hate government so much, and Obama as well, that they are willing to see this government collapse with some odd thinking that they can rebuild it with their ideology. In, their, in the image of Ayn Rand, this government that George Washington had three horses shot out from under him to create, they're trying to take it down. It's amazing. And they, and they think they try to take it down, but they enjoy Medicare, they enjoy Social Security, right. they enjoy the benefits of being protected. Right. This but, government that, that you fought in, in Korea to, to defend, if I'm remembering correctly. Sir. Not only did I fight, but there's so many young people that offered their lives to have just the government, not that they like, but they can improve. Amen. Congressman Charles Rangel from the 13th District of New York, rangel.house.gov. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tom.